So I really enjoyed your performance of this Bach Prelude. Um, just a really compelling performance, wonderful fluency, um, a wonderful attention to shape throughout, and um, all kinds of things that I thought were particularly well done, including things like echo effects, and um, and a way of balancing one section against another so that the structure of the piece is clear. So, um, so really, you're, you're well on your way with this piece. It's now your performance, your interpretation. Um, so all we can really do is just discuss some ideas and, um, and see whether you find um, some, make some discoveries that you can make use of. Um, so I was thinking maybe we might start by talking about some um, things that affect the impact of the structure of the piece. Okay. Um, you know, because when we make a change in a particular piece, sometimes one small change makes a huge difference to the way the whole piece. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. So if, for example, let me see. This is a version in which it's possible, I think, to see a little bit more of the music in one go. All of the, the main harmonies of the piece are simply expressed as chords. Yes, okay. and, um, and this gives us some, you know, a way of getting an overview of the direction of the piece. Now I'm going to go to the very end of the piece. Um, don't worry about the um, the upper staff for the harmonies just yet. What I want to focus on is the this hemiola. Now, this particular passage um, causes quite a few problems to us guitarists because there's a lot that we have to play on the guitar, especially this trill. Um, what I think we want to focus on is the rhythmic effect of the hemiola. The um, the strong sense of the bounce in the pulse. So we have um, um, right. The music seems to jump for joy at that point. Run. Ta -dum, tum -dum, ta -dum. And it seems a shame if we take, if we lose the effect of that springing rhythm to do something like when we could just go, you know, just um, move forward with the music and make the arrival and really drive the music to there. Would you like to try? Yes. So is it possible to play this passage without slowing down? So just keeping the tempo bum ba da dum bum 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 and dum bum and diddle and tum rum with no drop in the tempo. Okay. That seems very different to me. Um, very, um, very effective. How, what is that like for you? Do you feel the, the spring in the rhythm? Yes. And, um, do you feel like maybe the trill is um, gets in the way? I wonder whether we could just go something like. Um, so my, my idea is to use the left hand for the trill, okay. so that there isn't um, so that there isn't a shift which kind of slows the music down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you like, you can go something like. 
terminate the trill on the with the A. I'll do this slowly. So something like um, so that you can really continue the rhythm very strongly. So the first sound is B, D sharp, and G sharp. And then we're going to try to go. So the so the third beat is the arrival. That's it. So Okay, so let's try in context. We've got something like this tempo. With no no loss of energy at all. Good. So, um, what I'm hearing is a slight pulling back here. And what I'd like to hear is a sense of moving forward. So instead of... I'd like to hear one, two, three. Let's try, let's try playing the chords with only three notes. We're going to go... Then... Just these two notes. Yeah. And, um, of course, there's um, a little hinge bar that happens there, so... So, tip of the finger, tip of the finger, lift, lift the finger, then Beautiful. So we, you know, we can really move through. Good. So anyway, um, let's be clear. Then, it's the musical effect of. Um, Dum dum 
And I'm suggesting making a slight revision, you know, slightly thinning out, making it a little bit more like the violin version. Yes, indeed. Right, and a little bit less like the lute version, so that we, so that we don't get held up um, trying to play all of the notes. Something else that makes a big difference to the way the piece sounds um, as an entire structure is the way Bach handles the bass. And um, so as the piece starts to um, approach cadential points, um, Bach increases the bass activity. And one, one suggestion I have for your performance is to, is to make that much more clear. Yeah. So for example, Towards the end, this motion. Yeah, and it sounds like the bass singers of a choir coming in. Dum ta di dum ta. Can you make that very, very apparent to us? Do you want to try, try going from a little bit before that, and let's listen to the balance. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. So, um, so one suggestion is um, try not to try not to put this note down an octave. Try to leave it in in the register so that we hear the connection between D sharp and C and D sharp and E. Okay. Are you playing this G sharp? So here's your um, here's your your copy. Yes, yes. Right. So so Bach has this G sharp, and there's a connection. Most of the time, we're hearing um, all of this activity in the upper voice. And it's very tempting to think of the bass notes that Bach writes as, um, as being very secondary, just um, additions, notes of harmony, notes of support. But I think that once Bach writes these notes, they start to take on a different role in the piece. When the bass finally is liberated, it um, the music kind of reaches a new dimension. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, actually, can you play for me very slowly? Something like, um, then we're going to go. See how the bass is really on another, much stronger. Beautiful. Um.
Good. Um, I, th I think you can be even clearer. So we've got we've got the first person talking all the time. This person has got a lot to say. And then finally, another voice comes in. Da -di -da -da -dum. And I think that if, for example, you make the two sounds equal, so the thumb and the fingers completely equal, in my view, that isn't enough. What we need is for the thumb to be more than the fingers. So instead of Maybe that's equal, but... Right, so that we really... So the listener says, oh, I have to listen to this now. Okay, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> so this is as we try to play the thumb louder, what will happen is that the, the note the finger plays with the thumb becomes louder by accident, which we don't want, right? So instead of getting we go. we don't want. We want this, just the thumb. Can you try to keep all the fingers light? So the finger, the finger on each beat still sounds very strong to me. So let's do it this way. We're going to go even slower. All right, so we're arpeggiating. Very, very good. So, do you want to try to play together now? See if you can maintain those two attacks. Okay, I will try. Yeah. Any, any comments? Uh, balance is not good. It's improving though. Yeah, so um, when I'm playing something like that with more thumb and less index have to kind of just skim over
over the strings. Not engage, not push, but yeah. simply glide while the thumb pushes. So you have to get used to the fingers. So it's not, not a question of trying to play quietly with the fingers and strongly with the thumb. It may, we, that's the effect we want. But um, the method of getting the effect might need to be a little bit, bit more indirect. We just say thumb into the string and the fingers over the string. Um, okay, yeah, so it's, it's a whole new demand, and um, what I might suggest you do is, um, supposing you um, work on some studies in which the thumb has to sing out. You know that saw study? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, do you know there's an Aguado study that goes like this? Now, that one is the, is the exact challenge, the exact skill that we're trying to master here. Because when we want the thumb... out, the fingers, meanwhile, have to play lightly. And when we first try it, probably what will happen is... You know, the, the fingers will react. And instead we just want the fingers to be light. So. You might, you might find it very interesting to, to work on this particular skill, because it would be very useful. Yeah, yeah. It comes up in so many pieces. So I thought you played the opening very, very well, and um, this passage with the pedal E was very well shaped. I really liked the way that you, that you, f that you found this moment in the piece. Um, that was very good. Now what we have is a series of um, suspensions, right? It's a typical Baroque pattern, yeah. very found very often with pedals. So you have this... Um... A little less... So, we've got each time Okay, okay. Good. I might suggest, um, rather than the thumb being the very strong note, since the thumb is, is always in a rather confusing part of the measure, maybe go more with the fingers.
good. Now, um, all of this, of course, is done in the context of an overall diminuendo. Okay. So it's like we have, you know, the strong, then a little less, then not quite so strong, but less anyway, not quite so strong. So it's as though, yeah, so as though the music is kind of going like that, you know. Yes, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, this is the advantage of working through the harmony, you know, just playing, because sometimes things like this become so much more clear when we just go... Right, so when I'm studying this music and I just, uh, I've got... Right, then I can gradually see where is the music going. And there might be moments like, say, here I've got the, you know, this whole passage here is, um, it's very intense, but there's one moment in particular where um, where Bach writes one of his favourite, most intense harmonies. We're in the key of um, F sharp minor. Okay. Yes. We've got the dominant. Yes. Seventh is added, and then here we have the tonic, and the chord here is the famous Neapolitan sixth going to um, Bach likes to resolve the Neapolitan 6th by taking the bass down stepwise and from there going to the full cadence. So now when I play the um, the harmonic reduction Right? I think we can hear that this is perhaps a moment of special emphasis. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And um, even though there's only on that actual downbeat, there's just a single two octave Bs, but they stand for that whole chord, which you know emerges during that beat. So can you can you find a way of maybe making an emphasis there? Okay, so. Um, Bach here, I would recommend playing this B. So this is in Bach's arrangement. I think Rogosnik took it out. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Now plenty of bass. Yeah, that sense of rum, bum, bum, bum. Yeah. 
Good. So to go into a little bit more detail, um, probably at this point here, uh, sorry, here I imagine you're playing very intensely. Anybody would be, right? Because this high C sharp is so climactic and intense. So probably round about here, you want the sound to come down so that you can do this kind of reinforzando towards the Neapolitan sixth chord. Excellent. So I think that um, this is just a snapshot of um, what happens when we go through the harmonies in a lot of depth. I mean, we could go through the whole piece and discuss, you know, how the harmonies develop, where the intensity is, but a lot of that you're doing instinctively anyway, right? Because of your, your natural musicality. But sometimes when we, when we go into detail and really explicitly find the harmonies, we make surprising discoveries, like this Neapolitan Sixth. Um, maybe the last thing to talk about is, um, is just shaping the individual motifs. So, one of the big ideas in this piece is this... Yada da da da, right, this idea here. It occurs in so many different situations in this piece, um, and takes various forms. Um, even is based on this idea. When we, when we play this idea, I think what we want is a certain sense of a spring in this music, like I'm gonna try. What I'm hearing is a kind of a light note here and then a crescendo to an accent. Ya da 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 dum. Yes. Ta di da da dum. Can you try ya di da da dum? Ta ri ya da dum. Oh, the, the opposite, actually. Good. Now, that might seem a little bit unnatural because I know that overall, you want to do this, don't you? And you do it very well. But can we again have the idea of um, ya di da da dum, ta di da da dum, ta ri ya da dum, ta da dum? Yeah. Yes, yes, I think. Yes, I don't think we're quite ready to play all of the notes because now I'm hearing da di da 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 di da da di da da di di da da dum, and I want ya di da da dum, more ba da 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 dum, more pa ri ya da dum, but always with the diminuendo, always with this. Within the crescendo, it goes down, and then more than down, right? Aha! Different, right? Yes. What do you think? I think uh, the second solution is better. Now, let's try, um, let's try a little exercise, um, especially for our audience. We're going to take this rhythm. Just a one, two, three, four, five. Great. Now you're doing a beautiful articulation. So I love it. You're going like that very well, with a sense of an accent here. 
and then all of the all of the notes after it are just the result of that. Very good. Now I want to have you do what we don't want. What we don't want, which would be da 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 da. So, do it. Although we don't want it in this piece, but let's do it so that we clarify what we don't want. Okay. Good. Beautiful. Now go back to the the more beautiful. La da 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 da. Pa da 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 da. Okay, and that particular shape occurs a lot in the music of Bach. Let's try one more, which will be something like this. Ba -da 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 -da. Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> Great, very good. Now let's take a look at let's let's find the hardest place in the piece. Here, party da da da, la da 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 da, party da da da, party da da da. Good. So, okay, now when we get to a moment like here, this is a challenging moment because you've got your shift and you've got your slur. Um, and um, that's fine. I, I think it's okay to use the fingering that you have with the shift and the slur. But just knowing that the um, that when we do the shift, there will tend to be an accent. So you really want to avoid that. Now when to do that, you want to, to avoid the accent, it's helpful if the arm moves a little bit towards the shift, instead of that's like a straight line, yes. that, ten, that tends to promote the accent. If we go, see how I'm going, I'm going a little bit like this. Moving my elbow towards that tends to soften the shift and um, make the accent less likely. Okay. It's just a tiny anticipation of the arm movement. So instead of it's it will be almost the same but just a tiny change in the attitude of the arm as you as you get to the end of the beat uh -huh. hmm. ah there you are good hurry up Okay, so avoid instead of
Right. So as G sharp goes to B, B is um, at that point in a weak place, but it will arrive on a strong place here. So what we want is something like so this B can be like no, and this B can be yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Bass, bass. Neapolitan. Yes. Base. <laughs> Movement, Team Yellow. Great. Well, that's lovely to hear. So you're already making a lot of great changes and um, doing a lot of good work today. So we should sum up a little bit. Um, first thing is to um, always pay attention to the harmony. Um, there are going to be moments, like for example, the bit we were just looking at. Um, ba -di -da -da -dum. Is um, a good example of how Bach, um, often with this, when he's writing very complex shapes, he often um, uses a scale, simple stepwise movement, very often descending, as a way of controlling the line, but with changes of register. So, for example, this C sharp. Um, goes yes, and reaches there. And the result is that um, Is that um, is that movement up a seventh, right? Is balanced by movement down. But overall, you know, we just we hear a C sharp down an octave here. Yeah. Go to a B here, and then continue. A step lower than when we started. So there's all of these things to discover in the music. And the way you're doing it now, yada 
really took us to this B very convincingly, right? Rather than um, rather than creating a false accent early by p by putting the accent the first time you encounter the B, you're saving that up. So the, uh, now all of this was part of we were talking about balancing the rhythm. So listening to the little motives that Bart writes, and avoiding avoiding putting accents where you wouldn't sing them. Yada da da dum. We don't want that. We we want it to have one shape, with only one accent. It could even be body da da dum, body da da dum. It could it could be a different shape. It could even be yada da da dum if you if you hear it that way. But the important thing is that that there's an intention to the shape. Uh, so what I'm recommending is one of a number of possibilities. Well, I really enjoyed working with you today, and um, you made some great changes. And I enjoyed. And I enjoyed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, um, all right, let's say goodbye for now. Thank you very much, and um, we'll be in touch again soon. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much.